Hello, I'm Robin and welcome to Molten Modular. Today I'm looking at the Oxy Instruments Coral. Coral is an eight voice polyphonic Eurac module. What on earth are we going to do with eight voices in Eurac, I hear you say? Well, that's going to be interesting and that's something I'm definitely going to look at. It has not just eight voices, but it's also eight part multi timbral, which is probably more important when you think about it. Inside is an engine that's essentially based on something around plats. So you've got multiple engines of sound. You've also got effects, you've got a filter, you've got envelopes. It's an entire synthesizer voice rather than just being a source of sounds. It has 10 sound engines in total. Uh, six of them are synthesizer melodic type ones, three of them are percussive, and then there's one, which is the sample player. And I think what Oxy are trying to, to get across to us is that this is a polyphonic platz. It's a polyphonic multi-engine synthesizer, sample player, resonator, wavetable, FM, all sorts of different harmonically interesting and rich sound engines can be found within it. And the other thing they've really gone for is to try to make the interface as simple as possible. There's no screen. Although it, in some ways it could probably do with one. Instead, you've got a knob based and LED ring based menu system with which to, to navigate and finger your way through, which has its pros and cons. But all of this, I will attempt to show you. I should point out that the firmware I'm using is 0.4.7, which is the latest one that I'm currently running, and it's not perfect. I say that because during the video there might be some quirks and bits that fall out or things that go wrong. And it's definitely, while extremely good at what it does, it is also a work in progress because Oxy assure me that they are constantly working on it and it's gonna get better and better. But all I can do in this review is show you how it is now. So I'm gonna bring you in a bit closer. We'll have a look, we'll have a play around. I'll take you through the sound engines. I'll take you through what the synthesizer voice can do, how that kind of works or not. We'll be using mostly MIDI because that's how this whole thing really works. Although you can also use it via CV and quite cleverly via CV. So MIDI is where all of its potential is realized, but also CV has got a good shout and it's really how well this works within a Eurac environment that is what interests me. If you're faffing around too much with MIDI all the time, it starts to get a little bit grating and it wears against all of the joyous freedom that control voltage brings to a modular system. So that's definitely a balance. There's a dynamic, there's a tension between MIDI and CV in this module, which is quite interesting. I will show you all of that. This is not supposed to be a display of my awesome musical prowess. There are some really good demos out there of people using this. I just want to take you through what it does and hopefully give you an idea of what it sounds like and how easy it is to work. So come with me as we dive and swim amongst the coral. The Oxy Instruments coral then, here she is, beautiful in the different sort of pastel corally shades of color. Great big encoder in the middle. This is really where all the action happens. And then you've got associated knobs around it. So the top end, this is all sound engine stuff. This selects the sound engine. You've got three parameters for each sound engine, and then you've also got a, uh, an octave tuning knob here. This yellowy section is the filter. You've got filter envelope, level, you've got filter cutoff and resonance here. Then you've got the envelopes down the bottom here, amp envelope and filter envelope. They're slightly connected with each other over the sustain knob, which is a little weird, but <laughs> going with it, then at the bottom you've got CV control over all of these things and uh, trigger and CV input, MIDI input and your stereo output. Any of the text you can see in white is a secondary parameter which you get to by holding this button down. The encoder here is a, is a clicky one. And when you click it, things happen. When you click it and turn it, things happen. For the most part, all you're going to be hearing is the coral. I do have it rooted through a bunch of effects over here, but they're not on. I'm using the scope here, using the screen as a scope too. Just thought that might be useful. Who knows? But let's, for no, no more delay, 
get into what it sounds like. So 10, 10 sound engines. I mean, that's extraordinary, really. So let's start with the first one. The first one is virtual analog. And it's polyphonic. Did I say it was polyphonic? So what is going on? If we have a single waveform, you've got three parameters, as I say. This top one brings in sort of harmonics. Because in the virtual analog one, there's actually two oscillators that are in sync with each other. So it can do some interesting detuning. Well, the sort of sinky noises. And then one of these knobs sort of goes from triangle. in a wave folding style. And the other one does sort of pulse width modulation when it's a square wave. One thing that's interesting because I'm using the Keystep Pro in order to give myself four channels of sequencing, which will become obvious why I need that later on. I'm not using my usual Keystep 37, which is just a dream to hit a few notes, it arpeggiates, you can start putting a, a thing through things. <laughs> Whereas here I've got to go, what am I doing again? It's, a, it's slightly complicated. So I'm just going to stick in some notes like that. If we turn it into a bit more of a polyphonic patch. 
I must say that as a monophonic instrument, or you know, not necessarily monophonic, but playing single lines through it that you know sustain into each other and things like that, it is a real strength of this module. I mean, I know we're looking at oh, polyphony, polyphony. I must play chords, must play chords, but yes and no because as individual um, monophonic sound engines, it's quite. It's quite brilliant. I mean, I guess that's the plats coming through. You're taking um, you know, a known sound engine, which we already know is really good in modular. And making it polyphonic is, is great and interesting. But let's not forget that it's also awesome on single notes. And that's going to play a larger part, I think, as we get further into this and start doing multiple parts to go in multi-timbral. That's going to be more and more interesting. But let me play some more chords. <laughs> filter gets a little bit strong. Just where, while we're here, I'll throw in a little bit of the, the reverb and chorus that's inside the box. Now this is on the, uh, the second parameter here. And to get to that, you have to hold down the encoder button and then you turn it up. Now I'm spending far too much time on this first sound engine, but I just wanted to give you a flavour of how with this just one engine, it's great. It's already great. You're already feeling that, wow, there's a really good synth sound in here. And there absolutely is. Whether you're going to be using that for um, very short things. Or for sustained stuff. Whatever you like. Take out some of that space. Let's look at the next one. So next up we have a triangle with some wave shaping stuff going on. Okay, something weird's going on. Something very weird's going on. Let's try that again.
I have no idea what's going on there. <laughs> now we must also allow the possibility that I'm just doing something stupid. I'm using the Keyset Pro, which I don't use very often, so it may well be that I've done something stupid. But I don't believe I have. So let's go straight to the triangle wave shaping one. That's better. That feels better already. So you've got kind of Holtzwith modulation or a symmetry on the Morph knob, and you've got the actual folding on the Tombra knob. There's some really nice, oops. <laughs> some really nice gentle triangles, which you can then wave fold. And modulate. Let's plug in a little bit of the chord pilot just to run that round. And let's back to a few more chords.
can of course put an LFO into either the harm, the tombra or the morph input. Next up, my favourite, <laughs> always, which is FM. Now, FM uh, model has two sine waves smashing into each other with ratio, index, and feedback. <laughs> I think a little bit more chord pilot for this one. Thank you. 
Try something a bit more chordal. Next up we have a wave table. For this all three knobs navigate the wave table. Wavetable for me in playing with it is not the most extraordinary wavetable I've ever heard. Now, one of the very cool things about this is that you can import your own wavetables. There's a, an app that they've got or borrowed or, or something where you can take any audio file, load it up, pull all of the wavetables off, and then stick it in here. So, you know, it could be whatever you want it to be. Thank you. 
<laughs> just turn the space down a little bit now you may have noticed as i'm navigating through that the knobs don't always work immediately it has a, a kind of a catch-up system where you have to go through the old value before it picks it up if you've moved between things which are therefore no longer true to what the knob's set to if that makes sense although there's no pointer on any of the knobs so you wouldn't really know where you are anyway however having said that whenever you turn something it shows you on the ring of leds where you are so do you need pointers well yes and no <laughs> yes because then you can see where everything is no because the lights do light up but you do have to turn it in order for that to happen so it's a it's a useful indication using the you know focusing you in on that led menu style system but I mean, <laughs> but then I guess if it had a line on it, then it wouldn't necessarily be pointing to the thing that it's supposed to be doing, which is always a problem with multifunctional knobs in digital systems. It's just one of those, just one of those things. Hmm. Anyway, next one was next is MDO. What on earth is that? MDO is multiple detuned oscillators so there's essentially eight oscillators in unison which is which is pretty nice <laughs> obviously depending on what on what it's set to let's take the chorus down as well So this is a super saw, really, I suppose you could say. You can see the sawtooth waveforms. Nothing happens when I do that one at the moment. Let's try this one. There's your detuning. I mean, by golly, that's pretty nice. So I think the Tombra one leads you from sort of sawtooth through to square wave. And then you've got the obligatory pulse width modulation once it's a square wave. Something along those lines.
Nice, yeah, nice, we like that one. Probably a favourite, I would say. Uh, next we have String, which is in here somewhere. Here we go. That's quite good fun, that one. It's very, obviously you, you know it from the plats if that's uh, something that you've got.
So there you go, that's all the melodic sound engines. We now have three percussive engines, which are essentially the same, but one's a hi-hat, one's a snare, and one's a kick. And they sound like this. Let's put this one back in. Now for this, you use the the uh, release on the filter to give it a little bit of um, yeah the open hi hat close hi hat thing. See, there's stuff in there. That's all right. So let's move on to the snare. And then the kick. One thing I haven't shown you so far is the noise here. There is a noise generator inside which you can mix in. If that's useful. And then finally, we get to the wave player. Now, as a wave player, as opposed to a sampler, because there's no ability to sample in to the coral. You have to bring your samples in from elsewhere. It comes with uh, 10 banks of eight samples, sort of ready to go, but you can add your own as I have attempted to do so. <laughs> now, I should say straight out that the wave player side is, is a little bit dodgy. <laughs> it sort of works and it, you know, anyway, let's give it a go. See, I'm not entirely sure what's, go what's going on. So what you get is you can select your folder with this one. I've only actually got four folders on there at the moment, so I've been messing around with it right royally. And I've put a folder of my samples on along with a bunch of other rubbish. So hopefully this is my samples. There we go. So that, I think, is, a is actually an electric piano. <laughs> Um, but you select the bank here, then you select the individual samples on this knob here. Symbol. That actually works quite well, I have to say.
You've got some kind of horrendous bit crushing thing on the harmonic button, which seems to go all the way down to kind of nothing. So you have to have some of it on about there. Ooh. <laughs> so here's some of my lovely voice. Get a couple of octaves of pitch shifting, not uh, you know, not masses. And then it stops doing it. Oh, there's that again. Now the click at the front of the sample, that might be me, but I don't think so, so I kind of think... It's an issue in there somewhere. Caster. I could stick some space onto that. Maybe some chorus. Maybe some delay from over here. So you know it it does work. Let's put in some of the um, factory stuff. So, I mean, essentially, yes, yes, absolutely. There's a wave player in there. Uh, you can play one shot samples. There's no there's no looping. There's no editing on the unit itself. You just drop in a sample and it will play it back and pitch it up and down a couple of octaves. That that is it. It's a little glitchy, a little poppy, perhaps. There's a bit of weirdness going on in there, which I think uh, Oxy are evidently going to be working on. So at the moment, if you're looking for uh, the perfect sample player within Eurorack, then perhaps this is not quite there yet, but it has the potential of doing so. But it's all the other stuff in here that really is what makes it shine. So I think I've given you a good idea of, of the sound engines, of what the sound engines can do. Now let me show you the multi-part, the multi-timbral 
nature of it. And then we'll do some CV at the end. And that sounds like a good job. So it has in here eight parts. And this is where the old menu system is going to get a little bit taxing. <laughs> But that's OK. Let me see if I can remember what you do. Now, the idea is when you press and hold this, it shows you all eight voices. Now, you can select and put those voices onto different MIDI channels. And when you do, that creates a part. And those parts can be addressed individually. Now, you can allocate each voice to a different MIDI channel. Or you can allocate voices to the same MIDI channel, giving you polyphony. Now, you can do that absolutely individually. So let's let's decide what it is we're going to do. I'm going to do a four channel sequence with like a kick drum, a snare drum, a bass line and a pad. I mean that that sounds sounds like the sort of thing one might do. So what we're doing is we're looking at the choral as our perhaps our only sound source. You could have this and a little sequencer, you know, multi-channel sequencer, and you've got an entire music making situation going on. Let me try to demonstrate. So we're going to hold our knob and then we're going to turn it to get it to tell us something. OK, there we go. The first voice is purple. The green stuff, that shows us the different parts. At the moment, all the parts are together. Now, this this is going to demonstrate one of the one of the problems with the menu system is that your hand is always in the way. Because you're having to hold down the knob, you're going to have to keep your hand there. It's not like with some systems where you can just like gently pull it about with your finger so you can see what's going on. You have to hold that in and that's always going to get you in the way. So when you're doing this with either second level parameters or with the whole business with what I'm trying to do now, it gets cumbersome and it gets difficult to see. But hey, we're going to go with it. So I hold it down. I've got voice number one. I'm going to set that to channel one by moving the MIDI knob here. Channel one. I'm going to release. I'm going to hold down, go to number two, move this to channel two. There we go. I'm going to hold down it again. Part number three. It's going to go to channel three. And part number four is going to go to channel four. Now I'm also going to stick part number five to channel four. Part number six, channel four. Can't see it now. Part number seven, channel four. Part number eight to channel four. That's a little bit of a long way around of doing it. You don't have to do it as individual voices. You can have whatever voices are sort of left over being on it. But it, I thought <laughs> I thought it was useful just to show you how to do it absolutely individually. So you could have eight parts on eight different MIDI channels all running a monophonic sound engine, any of the sound engines. Now, of course, we've got to be able to address them all. And this is where the green bit comes in. So if I press it down again, I, I turn it until I get it to be green. And now I've got part one, part two, part three, part four. And it shows me that part four has got all of those voices on it. Part three has got one, two, one. So part one, which is what I've got here, it's currently still the sampler. I'm going to want that to be on track one, um, MIDI channel one. And I'm going to want it to be a kick drum, is the idea. So let's see whether I can make that happen. So go around to kick drum, which is here. Like that. So that's our kick drum going. So channel two, I'm going to want to do something else. So I hold this down, select part number two. I'm going to want to put that round to snare. Like that. Round to part three, 
And for this, I'm going to want my mega super duper bass thing, which I think is around here somewhere. Or maybe I'll bring that across to my two oscillator <laughs> harmonic thingy. Then get my last part for this. I'll go back round to the big synth. Okay, so it's sounding a little bit chunky, a little bit overwhelmed at the moment. You have the ability to change the level here, which I think is going to be important at this point. So there you go, in my, you know, pathetic efforts as a musical genius, you can see how the multiple parts within the choral can be accessed relatively easily. I mean, the, the interface is, is a little bit of a faff, but as interfaces go, it's not so bad. I understand what they've tried to do, and I like the way that they've stuck to their guns with it. And it's like, we're going to make this work for flipping everything. You're going to like the LEDs. Oh, yes. Yes, you are. And so you kind of have to go with it and you do get the hang of it. And it's as clear as it can be really within its context. So how can we address this via control voltage then rather than MIDI? Good question. Let's get rid of this thing and use something a little bit less junky. So without MIDI, you can go pitch into the octave input, gate into the trigger input. That's what you need. Now, because I don't know how to restore that into its original state, there's probably a way of doing it that I don't understand yet. I'm just going to turn it off, <laughs> turn it on again. Because I don't know. I don't know. It'll be in the manual somewhere. Okay, just starting from scratch. So obviously this is monophonic now. I must say, rather unexpectedly, it's gone very loud. I don't know whether that's because I'm now using it via CV gate and whether that's made a difference because there's no longer any velocity involved. Just going to test that theory. Sort of, yes. Oh, I 
there's something else I can't quite explain, which is that it now seems to be playing a chord via um, CV gate, and I don't know why. I, I don't know how I enable that mode of doing things. Or indeed how I get out of it. So again, I'm just going to turn it on, on again. So yeah, I think at 100% velocity via CV, that is essentially what you're getting. One note at this point that I hadn't noticed before is that there is no sustain, there's no polyphony in this mode. Whenever I'm going in, there's, I mean, you can use, for instance, in Eurorack, you can trigger something monophonically like the surface, which then rings and then rings over the top of itself because it has a certain amount of polyphony in order to do sustained notes. That's not what's happening here. Although this engine has the ability to do that, that's not what's going on. It's definitely mono, which is interesting, but hey, it doesn't matter. So we're back on our virtual um, analog, which is suddenly really loud. <laughs> and I'm just going to bring that down a bit. So via CV gate, you can play one big monster sound or whatever it is. The pitch is very high. That's a little bit better. So I could stick on the thing that I like, which is the um, arpeggiator. single voice oscillator big sounds all all the way through let me do that let me show you that again <laughs> There's an extra thing you can do with control voltage is that you can actually select different parts with control voltage. So you could be playing something and moving to different parts, uh, I think. So let me attempt to, to set this up again. So I'm going to hold this. I'm going to go to round two, part one, and MIDI channel one, part two, MIDI channel two. Part three, MIDI channel three. Part, is that four, is that five? I don't remember, MIDI channel four. So I've got a few things set up. 
And so on the first one, I'm going to select it. Got to go around to green. Green is that part one. Okay, I'm going to go to then part two, and I'm going to set that to a different engine. I can't hear so right so there's a way of doing this just let me think as I attempt to plug something in to try to do the thing that I'm trying to do so with this what you can do is select it via like the expression output on the keyboard put that into part there you go there's the next part I think move between parts I'm not controlling it though am I oh I need to be able to go to that part like that see is over here I'm moving this finger up and down on the on this bit here. <laughs> I mean I could probably put in an LFO to do this. Obviously, I'm obviously selecting different different parts via the LFO into here, which is then playing. So potentially, I could do this with more things. There's another one. But that's the idea. You can address um, from a single CV source going into here. You can address different sound engines. And you can set them up so that they're addressable via CV, via this part input. That's the idea. Not exactly perfectly demonstrated, but I think, I think you're with me. So there you go. <laughs> what do we think of that? I mean, it's quite an extraordinary, extraordinary module. It's, you know, tons and tons of stuff in there. You could use that with just a little sequencer in a box and be as, be as happy, happy as you like you know, multiple sound engines, each of which of them sounds great once you dig down into them a little bit and could pull, start pulling interesting expressive things out of them. The filter sounds great, works great. The doubling up of the envelope, it doesn't particularly thrill me. You've got this sustain thing and then you've got decay and release on a single envelope. Uh, I mean, envelopes for me personally, are was confusing already and having it a bit like this makes you go, I, I'm not, what am I, am I? I don't know. So that's that's not my favourite feature, but you do have individual envelopes over the over the amplitude and over the filter. So that is there. It's just you just struck I, I found myself struggling with that a little bit. But otherwise the filter sounds great and you can get it to create some really gnarly, nice synthesizer type sounds in there. Sound banks, I mean, we already know them really from the plats. We're, we're familiar with them. Pumping them up into a polyphonic sort of situation is a bit like what the Microfreak 
and the mini freak have done and so in some ways we're also a little bit familiar with that but in this context it does pull a midi keyboard into your euro rack which is not going to be for everyone the chord pilot is an interesting alternative an interesting way of bringing midi and bringing chordal midi or arpeggiated midi that kind of thing into your rack. Nobler designed this module for their own poly cinematic that I have over here and of course it's a it's a match made in heaven because the poly cinematic is similarly an eight voice polyphonic synthesizer but it only has really the one sound engine you kind of got saw squares and organ sounds that's about it. The choral does a heck of a lot more heck of a lot more but the chord pilot could be incredibly useful what is the chord pilot doing i have no idea i don't know i've been playing with it for ages and i still can't figure it out what i do know is that when you twiddle knobs and stuff interesting things start to happen i wish i could tell you more than that sometimes i discover some incredible things and other times i go and i don't know what i'm doing but i i'm gonna i will i promise to get to the bottom of it at some point so as a source of sounds within your rack it's quite a phenomenal quite a phenomenal thing and again I, as I say I think you can use it like you would a platz, like you would a disting something which has multiple sound sources in it that you select individually and use them one at a time you use the one that you want to use in the context of what you're doing so in terms of that it can work brilliantly just as a monophonic sound source because it's got a big sound and all of that's been taken care of in a relatively small space but the multi timbral side of it, yeah, you know, I don't know of anything else in Eurac which is doing that at the moment. And it's, you know, it's it's good and it's bad. It's good because you can get a lot of different sounds out of the one module all at once. The trickier side is how do you get to that? How do you access that? This this knob of of coolness, let's call it, in the middle, our pinky purpley knob, does its best at providing you with an interface to do that. But you, you do spend a lot of time trying to, you know, where, what is that light and what is it on? Trying to get that. And then am I on the right one? You're going, no, no, I'm not on the right one. I can't hear anything changing. Then go like, like this, hold it down. Oh, it's not working. Hold it down. Go back. No, it's the purple one. I need the green one. Which part am I on? Where's the green? One? You know. So <laughs> it's it takes a little bit of fiddling and faffing to try to find the thing that you're trying to do to make sure you're on the right one so the more layers that you build up the more difficult that's going to be i think i demonstrated quite well that it can handle four layers of stuff without too much trouble um, when i got the cv involved in trying to get a few more it seemed to start to fudge itself up so i'm not sure whether there's a limitation in there in terms of memory that it's got uh, in the number of voices that it's using uh, the different sound engines that it's using and maybe I was just like overdoing it a little bit of course it really depends on your context I mean here I'm just trying to bash out a quick demo but you'll hopefully be looking at it a little bit more carefully a little bit more intention and so that way you can work with it easier the sample side of it does feel unfinished uh, sadly it is a little bit glitchy and rough around the edges i had some difficulty importing samples across the first lot of samples i brought just play back as noise i mean ox instruments say that they will take any sample rate and any bit depth but that didn't seem to be the case i found that 44.1 and 16 bit were the only samples that it would happily engage with and then the difference in playback from this and playback from my computer where i made the samples is very different very different however it does have a sampling engine it is in there you can use samples um, and it's not something that i do particularly so i'm not the best person to necessarily talk about how to use samples in that context so it may be perfect for what you're trying to do but i should stress that oxy instruments have said that they are still working on the firmware and there will be updates and are more updates coming along all the time so we shouldn't judge it purely on its state now although of course that's the only thing that i can do i can only suggest that you that this review tells you how it is now i can't tell you to buy it because of what it may be down the line i can only tell you about it as it is now and as it is now to summarize all of my doing and throwing and thoughts for it it's not really a module for me i didn't think this is necessarily going to be my thing i was interested in it purely from a technological and interesting module kind of way but i don't know that's the kind of thing i would use in my rack particularly regularly having said that i've been mightily impressed 
by the individual sound engines. I think they all sound great. The filter sounds great. You can get some phenomenal bass lines and sounds and, you know, Juno-esque chords out of this thing. It sounds great. Really do like it. Even the percussion side I've really grown into since fiddling with it a little bit more and discovering that if I pitch up and down, I, I will find the sounds I want to use. And so very easily you could use it as a three-channel drum machine. Easily. The only difficulty with the multi-timbrality is that you can't CV control all of the levels, all of the layers, all of the parts all at once. You can only really do the current one. Although you can assign CV inputs to individual parts with another degree of, of fiddling around on that, on that central encoder. But on the whole, as a synthesizer voice, I think it sounds great. It offers a huge range of sounds, a lot of things to play with in a very small space. So, you know, glitchiness, firmware, other bits and pieces aside, it's a, it's a really interesting thing. And if you're, if you're looking to bring big sounds or big pads into your Eurorack, then definitely, definitely give it a shot. There you go, I hope that was useful. <laughs> I've still got it wanging its way through different uh, different parts. Can I find how do you how do you make it all go away? Push encoder for five seconds to reset all voices. There you go. One, two, three, four, five.